Hi. Well, welcome to my lab, if you want to call it. Um, this is the space I've been spending a lot of time in in the last few months, working on this big project. It's taken up all my time, that's why I'm not making videos much these days. Um, this is the company that I work for, that's their, what they call the assembly room. And uh, this is, uh, what I'm going to do now is um, modify a power supply. The project I'm working on involves the control of, uh, I believe there's seven power supplies in the whole system. Uh, and there's quite a variety of them. Uh, one power supply can produce 400 amps at 10 volts. And the uh, opposite end of the scale, there's another power supply, in fact it's this one here, can produce 30,000 volts at 150 milliamps. And uh, it's the control of these power supplies put together into the system that makes it do what it's going to do. And my job is to uh, hook all these power supplies together, wire them up, and put them into a, a control system. Um, each of the power supplies that we're using can be uh, controlled remotely, as well as, for example, this one, I'll give a better view shortly, but it's got controls in the front panel to adjust the voltage and the current as well. But I can hook up controls on the back and control the uh, power supply remotely using a PLC system and that's part of my job as well is putting the uh, PLC system together that will control these power supplies. So the job in this one here that I'm going to do is uh, I've got to change out a module in it to convert it from uh, it's a positive 30,000 volts and I'm going to change it to a negative 30,000 volt power supply by changing a module inside. So we'll have a look inside but first of all let's just take a quick look at the front panel. So this is a Glassman EQ power supply. Glassman's a, a big company in the UK that makes uh, high voltage equipment, high voltage power supplies. And uh, pretty simple front panel. You can adjust the uh, current control with this knob here. It's now set right to zero. It's a multi-turn knob. And uh, the display next to it here shows you what current it's producing. And the same with this knob here, which uh, controls... Oops get the camera centered here, the voltage. Pretty simple, very simple front panel meant to mount in a 19 inch rack, you can see the wings here and the handles for holding it. It's not particularly heavy, it's it's not a high powered power supply um, but uh, it, it does, it would produce quite a kick if you were to touch the 30,000 volts on the, on the back here. So here's the back panel not very uh, cluttered, not much going on here. This um, terminal strip here is where you connect up uh, your external controls. It's controlled by analog. You put in 0 to 10 volts to control the current. 0 to 10 volts will give you 0 to maximum current. And the same with the voltage. 0 to 10 volts in here will produce uh, 0 to maximum voltage on the output. Um, it's got a universal power supply. It can run up to from 100 volts up to 250 volts or something like that. It's a basically a switching power supply and it is regulated so what you, voltage you set it to it will maintain that voltage within the limits of the power supply. Now the connector at the back here is very interesting. This is a standard PL239, I believe it's called, 259, sorry, socket, that's uh, SO239, let's get that straight, SO259, a standard HF connector used in uh, radios, uh, <coughs> except it's been modified, it's had the center punched out of it. And I'll, <coughs> I'll show you the uh, cable that hooks up to it as well. But that's it. You put your cable in here and the high voltage cable comes out of that spot. So this is the cable that they use. It's just ordinary RG8 cable that's been modified. This is uh, a normal um, PL239 connector that you use in radios. But again it's been modified. The, the core of it's been punched out. And the center conductor and the center part of the coaxial cable is taken out like this through the, uh, the punched out core of the plug. The shield is connected in the normal way. And then what they've done on the end here is uh, put this little, this little brass button. And so the way that it works is you simply slide the cable in. And then I can feel it. It's pushing against the spring and it's made contact with the power supply inside and then you just simply if I get it lined up properly here screw this anyways it's hard to do with one hand and you screw it on 
and that's how we get the high voltage power out of it. The other end has been modified as well. They simply just took the shield off and then this will go to our pieces of equipment. We're going to put a connector on the end here and it'll slide into something else to where the high voltage is going to be going. Now this thing here is what's inside the power supply and this is what I'm going to change out. And um, it's uh, completely enclosed in a fiberglass case and then there is the the connector. This will show will come out um, on the, the back panel of the power supply. And from what I could see inside here it looks like a resistor capacitor ladder that's used as a voltage multiplier and uh, it looks like you connect the input power to here and then it goes through the multiple multiplier and comes out here as high voltage and that's what I'm going to be doing is taking this one out. This one here is a negative one and there's a similar unit inside the power supply that is for producing positive voltages so I'm going to swap these two out. So let's start going inside here just a bunch of screws on the side you're holding the cover on. And just have to remove them all. So I won't bore you with the details of undoing all the screws, but uh, all the screws are out. Let's see if we can get the lid off here. Oh, two more. Now, this power supply has not been energized for some time now, probably weeks since, uh, it's actually been weeks since we got it in-house and it's never been powered up. But, I'm still not going to take any chances inside. And, uh, take every precaution. Still not coming off. One more screw. Better take every precaution not to get shocked by this thing. So here I've removed all the screws and the connectors holding this thing in place and it just lifts right out. So this is the 20,000 volt one. It looks just the same as the, uh, or the, this is the, sorry, the 30,000 volt one positive and uh, it looks just the same as the negative one. And then we'll just get the negative one, make sure it's the right part number, it is. Slide it into place, plug the, uh, it's not that many connections on this, it's pretty simple. There's two of these, looks like main power coming into this thing. And then a little multi-connector here, multi-pin connector, which probably controls this device. Slide that in, and it just pops right into a bracket at the back at the front here. And then these two silicon, these look pretty rubbery, but silicon kind of um, rubbery insulation, and they just simply plug into these two connectors here on these transformers. And then four screws on the bottom, and it's in. Pretty simple swap, doesn't take much. Now a quick visual check to make sure I've done everything right. This connector is aligned properly. These two are on the right order. I took photographs of this um, before I took everything apart so that if I made a mistake I could find out pretty quick. Everything looks good. The module is mounted tightly. And these are plugged in. Excellent. We're all done. And I'll put the cover back on. start putting all the screws back in. So here's a tip when you take something apart put all your screws into a bag um, if you have one of those little metalized or magnetized little tins you can use those, those are great you just throw screws in there and the magnet holds it in place or a jar or something but always put your screws 
into something that keeps them all together instead of just letting them float around on the workbench here. Oh, this is a screw from another job, not from what I just did. So keep your screws so you don't have to go hunting for new ones when you lose one. So imagine what's happening here, how they're generating high voltage is that um, they're taking the line power, the AC power coming in here and rectifying it because you can't see in this picture but right here this is a just a regular diode rectifier a couple of big filter capacitors here so imagine they are taking the line power rectifying it and filtering it get DC out of it and, and then over here on this heat sink all these transistors here they're chopping it up with uh, these switches and making it back into AC again and feeding it into these two flyback transformers um, which look just like what you would see in a, at the old school cathode ray tube CRT you know the monitor that sat on many people's desks for your computer many years ago and then um, uh, boosting it up to some high voltage passing it through into this box here and uh, doing something else in here and I, I'm guessing that perhaps um, this gets rectified again and there's uh, this circuitry down in here uh, these are mostly op amps so this is analog circuitry here so I imagine it's reading voltages and uh, doing something with them to comparing them to some fixed voltages on the board here maybe voltages that you set with these potentiometers to set the current and the voltage output of this power supply and using it to as a feedback loop to uh, stabilize the output power uh, it looks pretty simple there's a lot of stuff in here I don't see a microcontroller anywhere and I'm quite uh, curious to know how they've actually done this is the display back here I'm not sure how they're doing it maybe it's just a um, an off-the-shelf voltmeter kind of display that gives you uh, you know three digits of volts or something like that and they're just using it to represent the current and the voltage coming out of the power supply so I'm not quite sure how they're doing that but uh, yeah it looks like lots going on in here lots of analog circuitry used to stabilize the output power but my my guess is is that they're taking the line power the AC input rectifying it to DC chopping it up with a switcher with a switcher like a switching power supply and then pumping it into this uh, this white box up here well it turned out to be a lot easier to get inside this than I thought just two screws on the bottom and the whole thing just slides right out. So this is what it looks like inside. A whole lot of nothing over here actually. And inside there's three circuit boards and some components on those boards. So let's have a, a closer look at this inside. It's just um, a simply a, a rectifier, a full wave bridge rectifier. <clears throat> These capacitors here which are uh, 12 and a half kilovolts each and a 0 0.002 microfarads each are simply across the diodes that are used in the rectifier. There's um, a number of diodes in series and they're just used to divide the high voltage on the reverse bias when the AC goes to reverse bias. Here you can see uh, one of the diodes there. But when the AC goes to reverse bias the diodes the capacitors simply uh, divide that voltage across the capacitors equally so that or across the diodes the capacitors divide the voltage across the diodes equally so that one diode won't take a higher voltage than the others and possibly burn out and then cause a problem so you can see there's uh, I think there's uh, one capacitor for every two diodes in the circuit uh, the black object at the top there you just got a glimpse of is a uh, transformer and there's one wire running through it and that transformer is used to detect arcs so when um, the high voltage jumps across something and creates a spark uh, the power supply can detect that and protect itself uh, these are the two wires that are bringing the AC the high voltage AC into the rectifier and uh, they're fed into uh, the series of uh, several diodes that make up the bridge and uh, that blue object you can see down there below my finger is a transient absorbing device, a transorb they call it, and there's two more on the other side. There's three of them total in the circuit. These three resistors on each side there, those black objects, are voltage dividers that are just used 
to feed back the voltage back to the power supply, a lower voltage back to the power supply to tell it what voltage is actually um, being produced. Now this is where the high voltage end is. You can see those two um, inductors there. They're in series with the high voltage coming out of the rectifier and their purpose is just to filter out any kind of noise from the switching part of the power supply. And then down at the other end of this tube on the left is where it comes out of the back of the power supply. So you can see another one of those blue um, transient absorb device, transorbs they're called. And, uh, and there's the, uh, just by my finger there, is the transformer again. And so here's a, just a quick look at everything. It's all spread out so that the high voltage doesn't jump back and forth between everything. So there you have it. A quick tour inside a Glassman EQ high voltage 30,000 volt power supply. Hope you liked the video. Keep watching. Keep checking my channel for more. Catch you the next time. Bye for now.